Hello, Eagles. When we last read Odd, Weird, and Little, we left off with not only to lose being bullied, but also those who are standing up for him. And that happens a lot. And so really, when you decide to be an upstander, sometimes you have to just come to peace with the fact that um, sometimes you might get bullied too, but you're doing it for the right reasons. You're standing up for the right person. And when enough people join together to do that standing up, then you're you're the strongest ones. And, and that's what's really beautiful. It seems like our friends Monique and Ursula are also standing up for Toulouse as well, um, which I love. Um, one of the things that we also ended with was Toulouse had written a note to the bullies that said, avoid obtuseness. Now, our main character in his class is working on math. And so, of course, that's what comes to mind. These are all examples of different angles. An acute angle is a small angle, kind of looks like a little bird chirp. And I kind of think of it as a cute little angle. We've got our right angle. As you can see, this one's perfect. And there's a perfect little square right up there in the corner. Now, an obtuse angle, which is what our character is thinking about, is right here. It's bigger, wider than a right angle, and not quite a straight angle or 180 degrees. However, I'm pretty sure that's not what to lose means by obtuse. So let's read and find out what does that mean? Chapter 7. Obtuse. So, he knows some English. Some pretty fancy English, actually. Maybe he's only learned to read and write it, though. Maybe he can't speak it. Obtuse is on our math handout. Greater than right. Obtuse angles. It's an angle greater than 90 degrees, but less than 180. That is, it's between a right angle and a straight line. I'm pretty sure that's not what Toulouse meant by obtuseness, though. Maybe he's being clever. Maybe the word has other meanings. During silent sustained reading, I look it up in the dictionary. It lists two meanings for obtuse. One is about angles. The other definition is blunt or dull. Toulouse was telling Garrett to avoid dullness, to be sharp, which Garrett definitely wasn't being. Toulouse is the sharp one. I go back to my seat. Everybody's reading. Monique's book is called The Witch Family. Ursula's is called Calling on Dragons. Garrett's is a nonfiction picture book about weapons called Arms and Armor. Hubcap is flipping through another in the same series. It's called Combat. Toulouse is reading the same book he had in the tree, which is called Nonsense Songs, Stories, Botany, and Alphabets. Botany? He has the book lying on his desk, so I can see there are drawings in it. Cartoons, black and white line drawings. They look goofy like ones in my book. I'm reading Captain Underpants, the one about the teacher who gives wedgies. The words in Toulouse's book are in English, which doesn't surprise me, since the title is in English too. Toulouse also has a small paperback French-English dictionary on his desk, which he took out of his briefcase. That case sure holds a lot of stuff. I try to focus on my book, but I can't seem to stop spying on Toulouse. He reads with his eyes open so wide it's like he's watching a scary movie, and his eyes don't move left to right when he reads. They stare straight ahead. His head moves instead. When he finishes a line, his head snaps back to the beginning. He laughs a couple of times, just little hoots. Then he quickly covers his mouth with his hand and glances around to see if anyone noticed. Both times, I dive behind my book. I don't fool him the second time. He waits for me to come out, then he spins his book around and slides it toward me. On the page is a drawing of some round-faced kids aboard a circular boat with a white flag flying from a mast in the center. It's sailing in a choppy sea, and some of the kids have their hands up in the air like they're excited. The others look angry or worried. Under the drawing is a poem. It's called The Jumblies. These jumbly people went to sea in a sieve. I'm pretty sure a sieve is like a colander, something you use to drain liquid, like from pasta or beans. A bowl filled with holes, in other words. No wonder some of them look worried or angry. The poem rhymes with, which seems babyish to me, and has a chorus at the end of each verse about how the jumblies have green heads and blue hands, which is sort of funny, but also kind of babyish. I figure if I was learning a new language, I might have to read books like this, but Toulouse understands words like obtuseness. This book might be too basic for him, so he must read it because he likes it. I look at him and smile politely. Then I open my book to a particularly funny page and slide it to him. I feel a little bit bad that mine is so much funnier, but this is America, and he might as well get used to how good things can be here. He stares down at the book. And stares. And stares. Amazingly, he doesn't laugh. 
Maybe he doesn't get the humor. Maybe what's funny in Quebec and what's funny here are different. He turns the page and keeps staring. A minute later, he flips to the next page, then the next one. Then he looks up at me and hoots. I jump. Everyone jumps. It wasn't that loud a hoot. It's just that SSR time is pretty quiet. He looks a little worried like one of the jumblies in the boat. I probably should have warned him how funny the book is. Chapter 8. Wire, Feathers, and Hooks Toulouse obviously loves Otto and Billy Bob, our goldfish. They live on the windowsill next to Mr. Logwood's desk in a classic fishbowl. Round, but flat on the sides. Not spherical. This geometry stuff is really sinking in. They must be so bored. They putter around the bowl, fluttering their fins, passing each other without seeming to notice or care. Now and then, Otto will chase Billy Bob around, nipping at his tail fin. I wonder if they like each other, or hate each other. I think about being stuck in a glass bowl with Garrett. That would be more awful than the most awful thing in the universe. Well, unless Hubcap was in there, too. If I had to be cooped up in a fishbowl forever with someone, I'd prefer it to be Toulouse. It's funny I feel this way, considering I just met him this morning. I guess so far I like him. It seems like if he likes me. It'd be great to have a friend, but I don't know if he would be such a great choice. Weird plus weird might make us double weird. Or triple. I'd get picked on. He'd get picked on. We'd get picked on. And by both Garrett and Hubcap. So that would be triple, double, triple six times the taunting. I should probably back off befriending to lose. I mean, look at him. He's been staring at the fish so long that he's starting to attract attention. Lots of kids are watching him watch. I guess he really likes fish. Some people do. For example, me. I'm not interested in goldfish in a bowl. It's depressing. But I like to catch them. I like fishing. What I really like doing is making lures and flies. I like assembling the wire and feathers and hooks. We're supposed to be writing a chapter summary of the books we read during SSR, but I whisper, Do you like to fish? He jumps and makes a peep sound. Sorry, I say, I just noticed you're staring. Toulouse nods, but continues to stare at the fishbowl. So you like to fish, I ask? He nods again. Do you make your own lures? Another nod. Do you own a rod? Tackle? He turns his head slowly and stares at me. Do his eyes ever move in their sockets? Maybe something is wrong with them. I probably shouldn't ask until I get to know better. Oui, he says. He definitely understands a lot more English than Mr. Logwood gives him credit for. I don't understand any French, but I know oui means yes. He opens his briefcase and reaches inside. He's taken so much stuff out of it, I half expect him to pull out a floor lamp like Mary Poppins did in the movie. But all he takes out is a small gray metal hinged case. A case and a case. He opens the metal clasp. Inside are feathers, fur, hooks, fishing line, wire, and various tools. The case is a tackle box. He lifts out a perfect dragonfly with a glittery blue sequined body. I reach my hand up and close my mouth. I guess it fell open. I can't believe what I'm seeing. I've met a couple kids who make lures and flies. I've never, never met one who carried tackle around with them. Is there no way he and I can become friends? Curse you, Garrett Howell. You too, Hubcap Ostwinkle. Toulouse hands me the dragonfly, and after looking around for Mr. Logwood, he's talking with a kid on the other side of the room. I take it. it. It really, It's really fine work. Strong and beautiful. I wish I could try it out on real fish. I wish I was at the creek right now with Toulouse and her rods. We should go do... Do you want... I think we... I stammer. There's a creek we could, you know, fish at. He stares at me. No surprise there, but he stares long enough this time that I begin to wonder if he's trying to think of some way to get out of going fishing with me without hurting my feelings. Then I wonder if he understood me. I mean, sure, he understands English okay, but was what I said really English? I try again. Want to go fishing sometime? He stares. I take this as a no or not. No, you're probably, maybe you don't. Okay, he says a bit too loudly. Hey! He spoke, Monique says. Whoa, Garrett says. He knows a whole lot of words in English. Yeah, one whole word, Hubcap says. I want to point out that Toulouse has also said who and my name, but I don't. Is that all you can say, little guy, asked Toulouse? Just one word? Toulouse stares at him. He blinks. Slowly, I see funny diagonal lines flash in his eyes again. Yes, 
he says, his fluty little voice. I can speak only the one. Whether we become friends or not, I really like this guy. <laughs>